there, I'm very excited to have you here. My name is Claudia, and I'm a platform engineer at HubSpot. My job is to maintain a sustainable tracking and experimentation platform that serves the hundreds of different engineering teams we have at HubSpot. I'm also a collaborator at the Node.js project and a member of the Gnome Foundation, where I mainly contribute during my free time. Today, I'm going to talk about the developer story of how GitHub Copilot helped me identify a critical bug in our code base and how it can do the same for you and save you time and headaches. So, what is Copilot? You could say it is an extension that suggests code in real time within your editor. But for me, GitHub Copilot is an assistant that helps me day to day to write better code. As it's powered by OpenAI and millions of lines of code, from open source repositories. Now, let's talk about the story of when Copilot identified a dormant bug in our code base and what happened next. But before we jump to what Copilot exactly identified, I feel I'm in need of giving a little bit of context about the library it impacted. Without further ado, this is Usage Tracker. Usage Tracker is a library responsible of tracking user behavior. It is an in-house library of the likes of Segment or Sentry, if you say, and that's because it monitors user behavior, identifies its interaction, and then respectively processes and sends the information over the network to a server sort. Hundreds of teams at HubSpot relay daily on our user tracker to drive our data-driven platform and allow our engineering teams, data analysts, and product experts to make high-level decisions that affect our entire business. As Matt says, is a tracker is a library responsible of tracking user behavior. It allows us to grow better and provide better experience to our teams and customers. And that is true, because teams rely on user tracker to be able to make decisions baked by data. But what if something was wrong? To a certain degree, of course. User Tracker operates by resolving parameters and data asynchronously, allowing the teams that use it to supply parameters and data on as needed fashion. This means that the data is resolved when needed and then merged with pre-existing static information. Like for example, your screen size. Finally, after the data being resolved, validated and processed, gets queued and then dispatched over the network after certain circumstances are met. And it works fabulously. But if everything was evergreen, I wouldn't be here conducting this talk. So I'm here to talk about a bug that Copilot found. A very important one, but very well hidden. So what did Copilot find exactly? Well, going back to the architecture I explained before, is a track resolves asynchronous data, including what we call identifiers with our parameters that allow us to identify who is the user or anonymous user that is performing an action in our platform, aka what we are tracking. For example, if an user clicks a button, which user clicked a button and on which page? And that's very important because without knowing who are the actors of our systems, we cannot reliably create cohorts of data streams and determine specific outcomes and decisions that should be done based on what we are tracking. Like, how can we know if a certain feature introduced only for starter tire users is actually being adopted? If you don't know which kind of users are actually using that feature. Yes, but then what went wrong? Well, on a regular day as any other, I was working on an update of a function that is responsible for, well, resolving that set asynchronous data and ensuring that unhandled rejections get filtered out, meaning the data failed to resolve should be removed from the final processing pipeline. For example, if the system failed to resolve the current user email address, it should flag that the email address was not resolved without breaking the execution thread. But if the system was unable to identify the user by any of the available methods, then it should prevent tracking from being done because we cannot identify the user. And here's where Copilot gets introduced to the story. 
when I was writing a new if statement within the function, Copilot made a strange code suggestion. Well, the suggestion being to add a case to alert the data that fate resolve, well, fate resolve. But doesn't, that doesn't really make sense. At least, where it added that suggestion. And that's because our logic slices the data that fate resolve out of the equation completely, or so imagined. Diving deeper, after the data gets resolved, we actually merge the non-resolved data, what we call static parameters, with the resolved data. And where the data that fate to resolve is sliced out by marking it as a non-defined, or aka undefined. But looking closely, the function that we use to merge data by default overrides the same entries of data from the resolved data if the values of the resolved data is undefined. Meaning, our system would falsely think that we succeeded in identifying the user when actually we did not. And that's because the system failed to detect that all of the identifying methods failed. Keep in mind that this is an edge case because in reality, we usually are able to identify the user successfully with at least one of our identifying methods, with our many thus very effectively hiding the existence of this bug. Because between the sea of data, it would only affect the small scenarios where, for example, a network request failed or testing environments. But even this being an ad scenario, it also means that if in any given moment we change how any of those asynchronous identifying methods work, it will transform this small ad scenario into massive spread as our system would just keep thinking that it was able to successfully identify the user when it was not. So this is why at least on this circumstance, Copilot was essential. Not because if an incident happened, we wouldn't be able to identify the bug, but because it simply gave a suggestion based on how it read our existing code base that would effectively prevent such incident from happening. Remember, Copilot makes suggestions based on the existing code base you're working with, and it proved that in our case, that can be a very helpful paper grammar, or how I call it, an assistant, because it consciously keeps giving suggestions and highlighting things that often can be easily missed by a human, because it just removed a great headache that would have been to discover this made an incident, and possibly only after an analyst started to notice weird behaviors and inconsistencies in the data we are tracking. Then, it would already have done big damage. And this is the actual impact that Copilot creates, and how it helped me and my team to possibly prevent a disaster, and how it can help you and your team on maybe preventing bugs, or creating better code, or giving you suggestions with things that you wouldn't have noticed before, because that's the magic of Copilot. The small things that create a big impact. So what's next? Well, because of that, we created better processes to ensure that this kind of ad situations wouldn't happen anymore. Like documenting those sort of lines of code so we understand why this was done before and also effectively creating more tests for specific ad scenarios and add more monitoring tools that can pre preemptively notice drastic data change sets from novel patterns. Also, I'm still advocating for Copilot and hoping that one day we adopt it org-wide. Who knows? Stars like these are what drive change. So thank you for having me and allowing me to share this developer story that I had with GitHub Copilot. If you wish, please follow me on GitHub at Overflowed. Lastly, I want to thank my team and HubSpot for being amazing and always supporting me. And of course, thank GitHub for the opportunity. Stay safe, have a good one, and enjoy universe.